This week, we look at some high-profile IPCPR releases involving seed regeneration. LaFleur Dominicana IPCPR releases and an FDA update. All that and more, so stay tuned. Welcome, everyone, to Stogie Geeks News. This is September 2nd, 2016. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island. With me on the lines via Skype from North Carolina, Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Going good, going good. I want to hear about this seed regeneration. This sounds like it's right up my alley because I am a cigar and tobacco nerd. I thirst for knowledge about plants and, and tobacco strains and all this stuff. So this is a very interesting topic. Yeah, so there were a few releases at IPCPR that involved this topic, I would say, of seed regeneration. And what that essentially involves is it involves taking some older seeds from maybe various regions, and we could talk about that, and basically regrowing them. And there's, you know, as you start to regrow them and you put them into different regions, they start to pick up different characteristics of the soils from these other regions. Now, well, and when you say when you say older, do you mean the uh, tobacco plant uh, strain is older, or the seeds themselves have been like sitting around for a while? The seeds have been sitting around for a while. Okay. Okay. Yep. So here's a good example. Uh, General Cigar came out with a release under the Macanudo line, a limited release called the Macanudo Mao. Uh, which is not Mao China. Uh, it's actually there's a Mao region in the Dominican Republic. And the story with the Macanudo Mao is they found they had some seeds lying around from the 1960s. And, and you know, the brand's been around for a while. So, um, and what they did is they started working on, um, you know, seeing what they could do to kind of bring these seeds to life. And they ended up coming up with a program which they call accelerated regeneration. So, what they did is they took those seeds from the Dominican, they went up to the Connecticut River Valley, and they basically grew a plant. Um, from that plant, they, uh, they basically took some of the characteristics from certain plants that they liked better than others, and they took the seeds from those plants. They went back to the Dominican Republic, to the Mao region, and they grew the plants again. And again, they looked at some of the tobacco plants that grew that had characteristics they like, mm -hmm. and uh, they repeated that process four times. Um, so did they, cro they crossbreed with Connecticut River Valley plants? They didn't, from what I understand, they didn't cross-read, they, they cross-planted. Uh, so they literally took the seed and planted. There are other cases oh, where I they... I see. Cross so they grew yeah. the initial plant, then they took the seeds from the initial plant and planted them again, repeated that process four times. I got four you. Four times. I got right. you. Right, right. And you. what? And what they did is they took advantage of two growing seasons, because Connecticut and the yeah. Dominicans are different. Two different regions where the seeds start picking up different characteristics along the way. They took oh, that tobacco... that's really interesting, actually. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, actually, I think I just sent you the cigar on that, too. Uh, the we Mao? Have the Mao, yeah. Okay. I, oh, you just sent it. Okay, I was going to say, I don't remember seeing it in, my, in the yeah. package I've been smoking through. Yeah, so there's a big M on it. Uh, but they came up with a final... They used that tobacco as filler, and um, it is... Uh, they, they took that. They um, added some Connecticut... Excuse me, some Colombian and Nicaraguan tobacco for a little bit of uh, strength and sweetness put a Mexican San Andreas binder around it, and put a U.S. Connecticut wrapper around it, and they got the Macanudo Mao, uh, which uh, is, uh, we actually got some of those from the trade show, and they're actually going to probably start appearing in stores very, very soon. Cool. Now, they did a, now General also did this, uh, being that Macanudo is a brand on the General Cigar. They did a similar concept with uh, the, a new release called the Partagas Ramon Y Ramon, where um, they took some vintage Dominican tobacco. I don't think they Across, they went to two different regions. I think they just kind of regenerated that. Regenerated uh, in the original soil right. where it was being grown, right? Or maybe, yeah, or at least the original country that they did. Mm -hmm. um, but they, I guess, they, they termed this one a proprietary process, but didn't expand on the details too much. Other than they did, did use seed generation from some old, uh, older vintage tobacco seeds they had. And uh, this was probably one of the more higher profile releases from general. Um, so what they did is, as far as this cigar goes, they took that tobacco was also used in that Dominican tobacco was used in the filler. They put in some Nicaraguan tobacco, bound it up with additional Dominican tobacco, and wrapped it with a Cameroon wrapper from the Belita region. Uh, so it's well, genuine it's interesting. Cameroon. They they paired it with Piloto Cubano, which is very very oh, yeah. popular uh, Dominican tobacco. So 
Right, I left that part off. Yes, they took the regenerated Dominican filler and they paired it with Piloto Cubano. And, and we've, we've heard a lot of Dominican yeah. tobacco people talk about uh, what a good tobacco that is mm-hmm. as well. Um, and it's a four-size uh, line, and it sounds like it's more of a regular production as opposed to the Mao. That's cool. Yep, yeah. and then there's one other one. Um, this comes from Altidus. Uh, and what they did, this is kind of a very interesting one, is... This kind of goes back a year ago. Last year, they came out with a cigar called the Monte Cristo Adius uh, cigar. And the story with that cigar is, um, I guess there was some tobacco seeds that were literally taken out of Cuba. Um, and, um, and what happened is these tobacco seeds uh, made their way into, uh, the, I think, uh, the Dominican Republic. Um, and a guy by the name of Pepe Mendez took those seeds and basically started a regeneration. Actually, he had those seeds for a while. And then there was a regeneration process that was started on these particular seeds. And that tobacco was used in the filler of the Monte Cristo Adius. Um, they called that particular um, tobacco that was regenerated, uh, I'm going to say the name right, Pelotico. Pelotico tobacco. Um, the Mendez family, who's this guy Pepe Mendez is, I guess, the uh, offspring, so to speak. Um, they have been now working with this tobacco. They sold a bunch of it to Altidus for the Monte Cristo 80s, but uh, net net, there's now a new Monte Cristo Pilotico, uh, Pepe Mendez cigar that's come out that's mm-hmm. using this regenerated tobacco. So um, as far as that goes, that's something that's going to be more of a regular offering as opposed to the Monte Cristo 80s um, in there. So uh, definitely stay tuned with that. It has an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Dominican binder and a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican Pilotico fillers. For those thinking it's the 80th cigar, it's not. It's a completely different blend, completely different wrapper. Awesome. And we got a lot of new releases from La Flor Dominicana. Yeah, and we should be able, actually, even though there's a lot, these are, we probably could get through these. Um, you know, they won't take too long to go through. Um, so La Flor really had, uh, I noticed they tend to, they didn't, at least at the show, they had four main releases that were being highlighted. Um, the first one is actually an old brand that they brought back, and this is the La Florida Dominicana Reserva Especial. I remember. And, I want to say I remember this. The packaging is different. Yeah, they they actually did the packaging. If you look at the picture, you'll notice there's a big amount of white space on that. Yeah. Um, well, that's literally John Carney was told me that's getting ready for FDA warning labels, which we'll talk about mm-hmm. in a little bit. So they kind of redesigned the packaging, thinking ahead with that. Um, they also introduced a couple of new sizes into uh, into the line. So they brought back, um, you know, some. They brought they have some of the sizes that were all the. I think they brought back all the original sizes, but uh, they also um, introduced a Toro, a Gran Robusto, and a Super Corona. Um, the El Jaco size is coming back as well in both a. Um, you know, so that's good news. Love uh, this, the El Jaco. Was the El Jaco originally released in a Connecticut? Will it was, and then they came out with a Maduro. Oh, interesting. I've never seen an El Jaco, Connecticut. There is an El Jaco. Because I would totally smoke it. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't seen them around either. But um, the El, So the whole line, uh, Ecuadorian, Connecticut wrapper, Dominican binder and filler, with the exception of El Jaco, which is a Maduro offering, I haven't seen that hit yet. Oh, wait. So these are all Connecticut? They're all Connecticut except that El Jaco. Oh, I've smoked this before. The band had the flower on it. Completely different. They've, re, they've yeah. redesigned. But if the blend is the same, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. And I bet you not many people have smoked this recently, but I had some like gift packs that had one of these in it. I think I've, I've reviewed it on the show. And I think that was the Reserva Especial because it was yeah, Connecticut. And, it, and I was like, wow, this is a really interesting Connecticut. No, yeah. And, you know, if you actually, you know, actually, the floor, I think, you know, this was actually discontinued for a while. So now mm-hmm. it's been brought back. If you look at that packaging even carefully, there's one other thing. That red, there's that red stripe. There's a silhouette of Lito Gomez kind of uh, oh, yeah. wallpapered. And that's kind of some new, um, that's some new packaging that's going in there too. Now, the good news is with the FDA, there was a ruling from the court saying that you can make banding changes to a cigar and it, it doesn't constitute a new blend. Mm-hmm. So this is good news for LaFleur. It's changed the packaging and they don't have to worry about reapplying for for approval there hmm interesting yep i have some fda updates to go along with yours too oh awesome so we'll Mm. hit those a couple more real we'll hit a couple more of these real quick 
Uh, Lenox has a new size. Uh, they introduced a 5x40 Petite. I have um, this, and I haven't smoked it yet, Will. Yeah, I think you I sent, sent you that. You sent me one, and I haven't smoked it. I saw it in there, and I was like, ooh, that looks interesting, because I love the Lenox. Got a little more got a little more strength to it. That's what it? I figured. That's why when I smoked it yesterday, I hadn't eaten enough. I was like, yeah, I'm going to hold off on that. Yeah, so I think I think you'll enjoy it. I think it's it's different than the, you know, we always talk about how size matters. So, you know, this is going to smoke different than a 65 by 50 Toro. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, definitely the same blend, Brazilian Cubra Maduro, San Andreas Maduro Binder, and Dominican Peloto Cubano and Dominican Pelo de Oro. So more Peloto Cubano again. Um, there was a new line that came out. It's called the Andalusian Bull. Uh, this is a big uh, kind of, I want to say it's like an almost Solomon-esque. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a six and a half by 52 by 64. Um, it actually looks like a Solomon with the end cut off, I guess is the yeah. best way to yeah, put yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, uh, Ecuadorian Corojo wrapper over Dominican binder and filler. And it's, um, I've smoked it. It's an uh, interesting cigar. It, it, it looks like a powerhouse when you look at that cigar. It's not quite the powerhouse you would mm-hmm. think. So you kind of have to take that mindset out. Uh, but that was kind of the, I would say, the big showcase new cigar that they came out with this year. Uh, that's hit the stores. I've already seen it on the shelves. And then the last one is, this is one of these cigars, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to say, I, I look at this cigar, and I don't, I don't care. I got to get it. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's called, so it's called the La Flor Dominicano Salomon Unico. And basically, you can see there's a picture that Lito posed for me um, in that picture. But um, he, it's, a, it's a box of 10 Salomones. And every one of the, and they, they take a variety of wrappers and they kind of create an artesian pattern. And every one of these boxes has a different set of 10 cigars. Have you seen how they do this? Yeah. There's, there's a, a video. video on Facebook. Yeah. I yeah. saw that. Yeah, that was really interesting to watch. And you think like they go kind of like slow and stuff, but like the way that they're cutting and applying it, like there's a method to it. Like they're cranking these things out faster than you would think. Yeah, there is. Um, I mean, it's not... So there's going to be, from what I understand, they took enough orders. I think there's going to be a total of like 50 to 100 designs. Mm. So it's not going to be... But they only took enough orders at the show. Like, So basically, you had a custom order this, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll fulfill whatever was ordered at the show, but I don't think it's something now you can regularly order. Yeah. So whatever it was ordered, it's going to sh- uh, eventually ship at le- uh, retailers. You'll see that silhouette. It's a little hard to see in the picture, but Lido's silhouette's on that one as well. Um, they're gonna have a higher price point. They're gonna be thirty bucks a, a, a pop. But yep. um, I tell you what, the problem with those cigars is I want to smoke them, yet I don't want to smoke them. I know so. they're so pretty. Yep. So what's going on in the world of FDA? Um, really, there was one piece of news this week. Um, it was around warning labels, and we have some good information on Cigar Coop on 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 the rules around warning labels. But what came out this week was, I'd say, a set of. Uh, guidance for uh, companies that have to submit warning label plans. So, so basically, in order before you're going to put a warning label on something, you got to get your plan approved by the FDA to do that. So that guidance came out this week, uh, which was um, you know so that's for better or for worse. But the warning label piece, and as we get into 2017, mm-hmm. that's going to become more of an issue. I, you're going to see that become more. You're going to start to see the changes with that in 2017 and 2018. So we're beginning to see that piece. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was interesting. I was talking with someone about uh, in the medical uh, field, uh, specifically security related. Uh, and I spoke with two researchers who are very well versed in working with uh, companies, Congress, uh, the FDA, uh, and others to provide security for medical devices, which is a huge problem. Uh, it actually stemmed from I sent a tweet out when my wife uh, was in labor with my son, my most recent son, and it got over a thousand retweets and over two thousand likes. Yep, I um, remember that. So we did a, a discussion. Um, it was kind of interesting because my friend offered to have the representative from the FDA who's appointed to this issue on the show, and I was kind of like, "Well, that's kind of interesting," <laughs> but uh, and I'm not opposed to it, uh, it obviously. But what uh, my friend did say was that they published. Uh, guidelines similar to this or in regulations that said, hey, if you're going to update software on a medical device, you have to go through a reapproval process, right? Similar in the cigar industry, right? If you change the blend, yep. you have to go through a reapproval process. Um, and so what the manufacturers took that as, if we apply a patch, a small software fix to our medical device, we have to go seek reapproval 
so we're not going to do that. The FDA actually clarified their regulations and said, no, if you release a patch and it does not modify the functionality of the device, you do not have to seek reapproval. So they clarified that. It was a little hopeful for me as it relates to the cigar industry, as it shows that FDA will clarify on things. And it, in this case, it brought some common sense to the situation, which was hopeful for me that it shows there are people at the FDA that do uh, take into factor like things of common sense like this and uh, publish clarifications. So now this we're talking medical versus tobacco. So of course, you know, speculate as you will. Um, but it was an interesting uh, kind of little fact I learned about the FDA. Yeah. And, and you know, here's the thing. And it's a really good point. So there's a round table that Cigar Dave did back, I'd say the end of June. Um, and it's public record. And they had some industry people on with Cigar Dave, Rocky Patel, uh, Jim Young from Davidoff was mm -hmm. on there, Alan Rubin from Alex Bradley, George Padron. And they talked about one of the approaches to kind of counter the FDA is actually direct discussion and negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, that was said on that. That's, a, that's not me. That's right. not speculation. That's a fact. I can tell you I've been told from industry people, and I don't want to reveal the industry people names, those discussions are probably, if they haven't started already, they're about to start. And I think in those cases, it goes back to what you said, Paul, mm -hmm. we may see some of those clarifications start to fall out. You know, again, we saw, some, we saw something a couple of weeks ago with the black and mild ruling. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm not, I'm not trying to paint a rosy picture, but I think there's some... I think there's some optimism right now. Well, and I, my hope is that these clarifications make it easier for manufacturers. And it was kind of, it was interesting, the other person on the, on the panel that I was on last night, um, so Josh Corman was the primary person. Katie Mazuris was the other person. She actually used to work for Microsoft uh, and led some huge programs at Microsoft. And Katie was saying how regulations such as ones by the FDA in different industries push out smaller businesses because the only the larger ones can survive and that that was a problem in regulation uh, in general, um, in security and in all these other industries. And I said, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, Katie. Um, so the um, people who have done this before in other industries and the FDA to a certain extent is aware of how it can impact the economy of a particular industry. And I hope those common sense rulings along those lines are also taken into consideration and we get some clarification that helps the smaller companies in this industry and doesn't just favor the larger ones. Yeah, I'm a little less optimistic on that piece because I, I, this is my feeling. I believe the FDA would rather deal with 10 companies instead of 200. No, well, I so, agree. And it's, a, it's a very yeah. valid point. It yeah. was comforting to me that People that I know and respect in security recognize the same issue in a different industry, but recognize the same issue and that, have brought that, that, that to that the table. A, you know, it is a, that is a really good perspective, actually. Though, no, I agree. So that's uh, that's some FDA news that you uh, wouldn't get really anywhere else. Absolutely <laughs> so not. It got came on our Paul, our security Paul show. Paul exclusive. Yeah, that's it. Paul exclusive. Uh, uh, so actually, we'll, we'll put, we should we should put the link out with that show as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a very yeah. interesting um, yeah. uh, interview, and you don't need to be super super technical to to listen to it. It's you know, we talk about patient care, we talk about staffing and medical uh, professions uh, and the like. So it's kind of it was very interesting. One of my favorite segments that I've done this year on my security show. Nice, nice. So that concludes this edition of Stoya Geeks News. Make sure you check out the live show, 6.30 p.m. every Monday night, stoyageeks.com forward slash live. Thanks, everyone, for watching.